Hello, I'm Andy, and this is Maths the Fun Part, which you might or might not find difficult to believe. Uh, this is a series for people who are into programming, uh, who always hated maths, or always thought, well, maths seems interesting, but uh, I don't know how to get started. Um, so I'm just going to look at the bits of maths that I really like, which are probably not the bits of maths that you did if you didn't do maths. Um, because they, they save all the good bits for the people who actually do math. So, um, like study at, at university, I mean. So these are like my best bits of the very beginning of university. I'm going to try and explain them as if, you know, absolutely nothing. Um, I really like them. I hope you do too. Um, so the, the, this whole series is going to cover sets, groups, and graphs. Today we're going to talk about sets, um, which are to some extent are the most boring thing. Uh, and we're not going to like study them in a like, uh, like the way you would study them if you were like really into sets. We're just going to study them enough so that we can do the groups and the graph stuff and to just give you kind of basic grounding. So um, mate, to some extent today is the slightly more boring one, but um, I still think you're going to like it, so stick with it. Okay, so first of all, let's address the question. Isn't math really hard and no fun and um, no use for anything? Uh, well, let's think about what maths really is. I think it's um, trying to think clearly about um, some concepts and trying to develop like a shared language that we can speak to each other to help us think clearly and communicate. Uh, and I would say that that's quite a lot like what programming is really. So uh, if you like programming, uh, maybe you like maths. Maybe this is its chance, right? So let's see how it goes. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about sets. Um, a set is a group of things um, and almost all bits of maths uh, build on the idea of sets. So you kind of, you need to know them to understand what I'm talking about. Um, the easy bits are, are really quite straightforward. There's not a lot to sets. Um, and then when, when you get hard, when you get into like, um, thinking about them deeply, they just go really weird. So we won't get to much of the weird stuff. Okay. So first of all, first thing to say about uh, sets is throw out what you know about um, this thing called a set in programming. Um, often sets are used to, to keep like an ordered list of things that are unique. Um, and um, they're definitely nothing to do with ordering in maths. Uh, they're not really about uniqueness. That's kind of a, just a... That kind of... The programming concept of uniqueness kind of falls out from just the kind of way sets work. It's not really what sets are about in maths. So what is a set about in maths? It's basically about this question. Is something a member of something? So in this question, X is not a set or, or might not be a set. Uh, and A is a set. And we're just saying, is X a member of this set? Is something a member of a set? That's what the only question really you can ask about a set. Um, so how would we express that in programming? Maybe something like this. Um, we could, uh, we're, the, the code here is TypeScript just because it's kind of um, relatively expressive and um, doesn't fill up the slide with diagonal brackets. Um, I did actually try and write these slides in Rust and they got too difficult to write, so um, I found something that Rust is not good for, um, uh, in my opinion, uh, which was very heartbreaking to me. So anyway, so anyway, yeah, so ignore the, the details of the syntax, just think about the kind of general ideas. Um, we can think of the word set being essentially an interface saying something either gets contained or doesn't get contained. Notice that um, the type of element here is any. Like you can ask this about anything really. Is this thing a member of a set? Anything can be in a set. And the answer is either yes or no, a boolean. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Here's some um, jest style assertions about some things. So if x is a member of a, then we would expect that when we call the contains method on this a, um, ask whether x is in it, the answer will be true, and if it's not a member, the answer will be false. So there's some code for you, see? I told you we're going to use programming ideas to understand math stuff. Um, so there's going to be more code on these slides than maths, but we are going to have some maths. So here's some maths, and this is like some basically some vocabulary uh, you need to learn. Um, uh, if x is a member of a, then we write x, and then this kind of curly e thing, and then a. Um, and then if it's not a member, we'd write the same thing, but we draw a line through it saying this is not a member of. So um, well, whenever we write X and then that symbol and, and then A, that means X is a member of A. Okay, so let's have an example. Here is some code implementing that interface. Uh, so this class is called set123, and it is a set. Uh, and that, the reason it's a set is because it implements this contains method where we can ask is this element a member of set? It could be anything. And the answer is, 
Um, if the uh, if the thing you passed in is a, is one, two, or three, then yes. Otherwise, no. So this is the set of like the way we would say this colloquially is this is the set that contains one, two, and three, or the set of one, two, and three, and nothing else. So here we do some uh, unit tests for our, our set one, two, three, and we can see that it does contain one and three, and it does not contain zero and four. It also does not contain elephant or anything else, right? It's uh, um, and that would be a fine question to ask. So let's um, look at another uh, implementation. I won't show you the actual implementation of Araset. I, get, I think you could probably guess what it is. Basically, Araset is um, a class that if you give it an array of things, then those things are in the set and everything else is not in the set. So uh, in this case, we passed in some strings and we've said um, this, so this set is going to contain X and Y and Z and it's not going to contain A or 3 or indeed uh, a new empty set where empty set is some other set class that we've created, which by the way, has nothing in it, which we'll get to. Okay, so let's look at another example. Now this is uh, another type of set which takes two sets and then does something with them. And this is called an intersection, and this is a concept from maths, right? The intersection of two sets. So given two sets, set one and set two, uh, the intersection of those sets, uh, it just does what we've implemented here in this contains method. It says, uh, given given something which we're finding out is this does it, does this set contain it or not? Then the answer is yes if um, set one contains it and set two contains it. So it's the intersection because it's all the things that are in both set one and set two. So it's kind of where they overlap, where they intersect. That's what's called intersection. And here's how we write it in maths. We write to to find a new set which is um, which contains only the elements that are in both, in both A and B, we write A intersect B like this, this kind of upside down U, uh, and that means uh, that's a new set, which is the, called the intersection of A and B. Um, and here's another way of thinking about that. Here's, about, here's what, how we would write that in maths, and similar to the implementation we saw in code earlier. We say if X is in A and X is in B, then X is in the intersection of A and B. Um, so let's learn one more piece of vocabulary, which is um, we can sort of abbreviate this a little bit by saying um, X is in A and X is in B implies X is in A intersection B. So that arrow from left to right means implies. It means like if the top thing is true, then the bottom thing is true. And actually, we can learn another symbol while we're here, which is the what we might call if and only if. So in this case, we're saying if the top thing is true, then the bottom thing is true. But what this arrow also pointing the other way means is if the bottom thing is true, then the top thing is true. So if we're, if we're given an X, when we're told it's in the intersection of A and B, we know for sure that X is in A and X is in B. So hopefully you're with me so far. We've learned a few symbols. We've learned the, the is a member of or it is in symbol. And we've learned the um, implies. And then we've learned this sort of if and only if thing, which is implies in both directions. Uh, and we've learned that a set is just a, something that either contains something, for, for any given thing, it either contains it or doesn't contain it. Okay, let's talk about another um, thing we can do to combine two sets together. It's called the union. So it's very much like the intersection. It takes two sets. Uh, and then we've got an implementation of the contains method here. And in this, this one is slightly different. It says um, this, this union contains an element if uh, set one contains it or set two contains it. So last time it was and, this time it's or. So the union is all, all the things, the, the, the set is, the set that is the union contains all the things that are either in A or in B or both. Um, and here's how we write it. And you can see why I said intersection was like an upside down U because I think of this U symbol here as standing for union, the union of A and B. I don't know if I'm right or not. But yeah, the, you can think of the union as being, um, like in a marriage when two families become one family, right? Now suddenly everyone's in both families. So it's like the union of um, these two families become one big family, um, which is called the union of A and B. So let's do our mathematical language again. We say if X is in A or X is in B, then uh, X is in the union of A and B. Notice the or there instead of the and. But also the other way around. If X is in the union of A and B, then either X is in A or X is in B, or maybe both. Um, so we've learned, um, you see, we didn't need to learn any new, any new notation there to understand the union apart from that little U symbol. 
Okay, let's talk about subsets. So subset, a subset is um, defined in code like this. So we can say, we can, uh, well, this is a function to decide whether something is a subset of this. We're, we're like, in, we're inside a set here, let's imagine. Um, and we're writing a, a method to say, is this other set a subset of us? And what we do is we loop through all the things in this. And then we say, if, if this thing is not contained in, um, the other set, then it's not a subset. Otherwise it is. So we're basically saying, if we loop through all of them, um, and they're all in other, if it, so if we look through all of our stuff, and if, if they're not in other, if they are in other, then it's a subset. If they're not in other, it's not a subset. Okay, so I would say the code for that is a slightly harder to understand thing than the maths, and we'll get to the maths in a second. But first of all, we need to talk about how I just went ahead and wrote this line of code, um, saying looping through all the elements of this. And I said before that a set is just something with a contains method, so we're not allowed to do this. So what we actually need to do is define something. You know, if we want to ask questions like this, we're going to need to define something a bit more concrete than just something that has a, a contains method. We're also going to need um, a, a, an iteration an iteration method, which is what this... So the, the that whole abstract symbol iterator blah, blah, blah thing, that just means you can iterate through it. Okay, and we're going to call this thing an iterable set. It's a... Uh, in this case, we made we made it an abstract class, but you can think of it as an interface. It's basically something that's a set that's also iterable, um, like this. Uh, so now we're allowed to say for element of this, right? Which is all we needed. Um, so the the reason I particularly drew attention to that is that in math there's a symbol for something that's a, a kind of similar idea. I wouldn't say it's exactly the same, um, but we have this ability in math to say for all something, and that means um, like, basically, you kind of get iteration for free in math. You don't actually have to do the iteration. You can just say, for everything that satisfies this property. And one of the nice things about maths is you don't actually have to be always, you don't always have to be explicit about how to do something. You just say, imagine we can do this thing. So in, in maths, we say for all, and that means for everything that fits the, the you know, the following criteria. Um, so here's, here's, let's have a look at, we need, the reason I mentioned for all is because we're going to need that for our definition of a subset. So if we want to say a set A is a subset of B, we saw the programming definition. The programming definition was basically if everything that's in A is also in B, then, then A is a subset of B. So here's our mathsy definition. Um, we can say for all X in A, then X is in B. That implies um, that A is a subset of B. And also the other way around. If A is a subset of B, then for all x in A, x is in B. So you can see that for all is doing the job that we, of the loop that we, we had in the, in the code. So for all is saying everything that's in A, and then the comma, the comma is kind of carrying a lot of weight here. The comma means then uh, that x is in B. So if for all, everything that's in A is in B, then A is a subset of B. And similarly, if A is a subset of B, then everything that's in A is in B. Hopefully you're still with me. Okay, so let's talk some more about some stuff that goes starts to bend our brain a little bit. So we've talked about the kind of basic ideas of sets. Now let's talk about some different sets. So let's think about the set that I'm calling here evens. So evens is a class that implements set, and it has a contains method, which is all you need to be a set. And the contains method says, if element is a number, that's what that first bit means, and if element is even, that's element percent 2 equals 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 0, that means if element is an even number, um, then evens, uh, then then element is in evens. So evens is the set of all even numbers, right? So here's how we'd write it in maths, um, and I'm d introducing a, a new confusing symbol here, so don't worry. Um, yeah, we say um, x is in this set called evens if x is in z, which I'll explain in a sec, and if x mod 2 equals 0, as in if x is even. Um, so x mod 2 just means the same as what, what we had in the code on the last slide. Uh, it means x, uh, uh, if x mod 2 is 0, then x is even. And x in z means if x is an integer. That z symbol just means the set of all integers. So that was think, uh, our example, that's the set of even numbers. Um, and we can say for all x in evens. 
So in math, this is absolutely straightforward. We can just say, um, just for if if we're talking about all the all the things in these set evens, we can just say for all the all the things in evens. Uh, so this is how math is powerful, right? Because how would you how would you do that iteration on the on the, the class evens? So here's how you'd implement it, right? If you wanted to use the yield keyword to make simplify writing iterators. Um, you would yield zero, and then you would yield one, and then, sorry, not one, because one's not even. You would yield zero, and then two, and then minus two, and then four, and then minus four, and so on. Notice that that's slightly clever, the way we've done that, like we, because that way we will cover them all, instead of, um, well, I say we will cover them all. You know what I mean. In theory, you would cover them all. Whereas if we started doing all the positive ones, and then said, oh, later we'll do the negative ones, um, you'll kind of never get there. Now, obviously, you will never get there. So this is a this is some code that doesn't terminate, right? And in fact, it's very very easy to see it doesn't terminate because there's a while true and there's no way of escaping from it. So um, yeah, in maths it's fine to say for all x in evens. Um, in programming, harder to say. Okay, so another thing I need to tell you about sets: uh, sets can contain sets. So let's look at a a set. We're going to call it all sets. And it has a contains method, which means it's a set. And the contains method uh, just says uh, it's going to return true if element has a method called contains. That's what this um, that's what this line of code means. So this is like particularly poor TypeScript, or particularly a good reason why you shouldn't use TypeScript for slide code. So let's step back from that and just say all sets contains um, everything that's a set. So it's a set that contains everything that is a set. So let's look at this in practice. So um, again, there's this, this class which I haven't defined called empty set, but maybe you can imagine the implementation of contains for the empty set. That means that's a set that has nothing in it. So it answers false for everything you ask about. So does uh, uh, S, the set of all sets, contain empty set? Yes. Does the, uh, the set of all sets contain set one, two, three? Yes. Does the set of all sets contain three? No, because three is not a set, at least in this this world. Okay, so the set that's called evens, is that a member of all sets? Well, yeah, it's a set, so yes. Um, so here's really here's what's really going to bend your mind. Is set is all sets a member of all sets? Well, yes. Yes, it is. So we can write that in math mathematical annotation notation like this. All sets is a member of all sets. And um, this is where we really run into problems. So the, the sets the stuff that I've been telling you today is not actually how mathematicians who do set theory uh, define sets. Because um, if we allow this kind of thing to happen, like we, we allow something a bit like this to happen, but if we allow this kind of thing to happen willy-nilly, we end up with some things like Russell's paradox, where we start asking questions like, is the set of all sets that don't contain themselves a member of itself? And if you think about that enough, um, it's an unanswerable question. Uh, and that's very inconvenient. We don't like them. Um, so actually, real set theory formulates itself in a more complicated and confusing way. But the stuff that we've learned about sets today is enough for us to understand quite a lot of the way sets actually get used in maths. Um, so, yeah, there's basically what I'm trying to say is there's a whole load of deeper mysteries about sets um, that we're not going to cover today. Um, the next one will be about groups, and then one after that will be about graphs. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a comment saying any other area of maths you'd um, like me to talk about. Um, or telling me that um, uh, you did not understand at all why I like maths from watching that video, or that you now fully understand. Um, and I, yeah, hopefully the next one about groups will be more interesting. Groups are one of my absolute favorite bits of maths, but you needed the sets to get there. So um, I hope you're having a great day. Um, leave a comment, um, follow me on Mastodon, uh, check out some of the things on this page, and see you next time.